So this segment in our ongoing series on live volt equipment is going to focus on switching DC current. DC current becomes a bit of an issue and we're seeing uh, with the popularity of solar farms that electrical workers have to be very cognizant of requirements with working with DC power systems. Today I'm going to give a demonstration of the amount of arcing that can be seen working with DC current. This is a typical contactor that would be used for switching AC. Now we can use it uh, switch DC, but we have problems with it. Now, a proper contactor that was built and manufactured to be specifically used on a DC system is something like this. It seems old, but what it has is it has a, a special arc chute as well as what we call a magnetic blowout coil. Now I'm going to just take the remove the chute. Here are the main contacts. I'm not sure if that can be seen on camera. So you can actually see the contacts opening and closing. The problem isn't with closing a set of contacts with DC, it's opening with current under load. What happens is with DC power, we never see a fluctuation in the waveform. When we're opening up a circuit in DC, we're always getting the full applied voltage and the full applied current in the circuit. So what happens is when the contacts go from a closed position to an open position, you'll have arc forming. Now what makes this contactor different is that there's this blowout coil. When there's an arc that's formed, current is still traveling across the arc, but what happens is it creates a magnetic field in this blowout coil and it will draw the arc in a predictable pattern up towards this magnetized coil inside of the arc chute to try and extinguish the arc. So that's the theory behind this. Now, when we get into a regular contactor, such as this one that was designed to work with alternating current, we run into certain problems. First one notably is that, I'll point to it, the distance between the contacts. There's not enough of an air gap to sufficiently extinguish an arc. So uh, currently I've got a demonstration circuit built I will be switching exactly 120 volts DC. Now I'm going to, I have it hooked up to a momentary contact or push button and what we're going to see is some very vivid and pronounced arcing across these contacts. So I'm just going to hit the button once and I'll do it again. You can see that there's some very really pronounced arcing. If this was alternating current, we wouldn't see that arcing. Now let's talk about what are some of the problems with this much arcing. Uh, we may not be able to see it, but for the, over the years for points of demonstration, the contacts here are starting to be really badly pitted. Uh, you're going to see welding of contacts. Either the pitting is so bad that you're going to have high resistance where they're going to burn out and not make contact anymore, or that the contacts will physically weld themselves shut, which now the machine or the device is no longer useful. So just to recap, let's have a look at this. That's a lot of arcing. Now we do have a couple of techniques that we can use. One of which is by wiring two contacts in series with one another, I can effectively double that air gap. Now uh, it is somewhat effective but it is not the most effective method of extinguishing an arc with DC current. One of the most effective methods that I know of is if we were to wire a capacitor across those contacts in parallel. So I've got a one microfarad capacitor here from the lav volt system. I'm going to put it onto the, the rail and I'm going to wire it across the contacts. Again, one microfarad. What you're going to see is during the point of time when the contacts are opening, we see an arc established, the capacitor, because it has the ability of taking that current and charging itself so quickly, it's actually drawing a lot of that current away. So in essence, it's acting as what we, we would call in industry a current shunt. So let's have a look. I don't know about you, but I would say that that arc has greatly diminished and that was just one microfarad. 
Now, I have a larger capacitor. Let's see if I switched over to a larger capacitor, if I could eliminate most of that arcing altogether. So we're going to get rid of this one microfarad capacitor. We're going with, and now this is an electrolytic capacitor as well. One of the reasons this is, so, is it, uh, this is so effective is the fact that, and we've discussed this previously, is that capacitors have what we is known in industry as low ESR, equivalent series resistance. It could charge and discharge itself very, very quickly. So now with the larger microfarad value, I can't see an arc. So doesn't matter how fast I turn this on and off and I'm actually going to bring up the voltage. So I'm currently at about 160 volts DC. Let's take a look again. I can't see arcing. So this is uh, one of the most important things to understand from a design standpoint. Using alternating current rated devices for switching DC current is something that has to be taken into consideration. If you're going to do it, then you're going to have to do a technique like this and run a set of capacitors in parallel with the contacts to increase the longevity of the device or purchase DC current rated or specific contactors. Now, these are a little bit more expensive, but as we can see through our demonstration, they are warranted. It is important that we use the right equipment for the right task. Before you turn this apart, I want to get this super close up of all of that. Can I yep. just insert them? Yep. So just give me a second here. Let's see if I, how close I can get with my focus. So, want me to go back into the logical sequence? Hey, yeah, no, no, just leave it to this one here. I'll just get it. I'll just know which one this is. Okay. I got to get the part of the way that I focus. Focus, damn it. 